hello, hello, and welcome to the Bright Orange Future podcast. I'm Corey Clipston, your uh, co-host, dialing in from the Los Angeles area, and as usual, I've got my real-life big brother, Maddie G, phoning in from Seattle. It's a, is it a phone or is it a video? I don't even know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just coming in hot. Either way, it doesn't matter the medium. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be uh, exciting. So let's get to it. I love it. I love it. So uh, we took a good week between our last recording to think about what this show is. We've got five or six episodes in the can and, you know, found some things that worked and found some things we wanted to do a little differently. Um, I'm really excited about this. So the first thing is the, uh, the name change. We're dropping the ugly duckling. It's just uh, it's a little too fun, a little too cute. So just bright orange future. This is the pod and uh, excited about that. And then uh, we also felt, uh, even just doing a dry run with one of our, our good friends and my colleague Brecky as a guest, we felt that uh, it was a bit rushed trying to get through, you know, some chat and some topics and a guest in, you know, 25 minutes. So we're just going to let it run a little bit and do more like, you know, 40 to 60 minutes if we have a guest and, and kind of see how that goes. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I think uh, getting in a flow will be good. And uh, having a guest is really fun. So it's exciting for us because we get to, you know, often meet someone new in my occasion. Sometimes uh, you might know the guest um, from your world because your world is expansive. Um, uh, but well, we're uh, going to we're relying on you to book some of the uh, the local talent in uh, in Seattle for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got some I got some uh, aces up my sleeve here. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very exciting. And, and, and that's the other thing, you know, we were kind of uh, talking about, you know, Gen X music, Bitcoin. I think what we realized is uh, what we're kind of most interested in is like, where do we go from here? Because 2020 feels like such an inflection point. I mean, definitionally with what's gone on in the past six months, you know, the next decade is going to look very different than anything that's come before. And you know, we, there are some trends that are massively positive and we're going to talk about those and have guests on to talk about those. And, you know, generally the positive trends that, that are good for the world generally end up dominating and, and shaping the future, but they also disrupt things and they cause problems for people and for institutions. And I think one of the most interesting things to dig into and to explore is trying to forecast some of the problems that will be created in every area, mm -hmm. whether this is like culture or technology or finance or economics, politics, whatever, and having people on that can kind of identify some of those things and, and talk about potential solutions or ways to make sort of like a softer landing for some of the people that will be, uh, you know, wrecked <laughs> by the changes that are coming. And that's something I'm, I'm super interested in. Mm. Yeah, that brings up a lot of uh, what I think about when I think about the uh, a disruptive change, a disruptive force coming in to make change. And it's a lot of what I have concerns about when it comes to, uh, you know, talking about the bright orange future and uh, just a sea change like that is, is who gets left behind and is there conflict, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One one way to sum it up, and I really want to get the get into this a lot with our our first guest for the new format. He'll be coming on here in a minute or two. Um, Knut Sponholm um, is, you know, a lot of this can kind of be summarized uh, the way that Peter Thiel talked about it in his book Zero to One, which mm -hmm. is uh, he basically laid out a, a quadrant, and you know, on one axis was optimist versus pessimist, and the other quadrant was definite versus indefinite. And, you know, so if you look at that as a person or as a culture, like one way to think about this would, would be, you know, post-World War II Chinese culture has largely been a definite pessimist, especially in the last like 30, 40 years after they've, you know, started their rise. They're kind of uh, culturally pessimistic about the world and see it as a conflict between hegemons, et cetera, but they have a definite goal and they're working toward it. And... Americans, you know, post World War II, probably until the global financial crisis in like 2008, were basically definite optimists. They just knew where they were going. They're going to the moon, they're going to Mars, their kids are going to be richer than they are, and there's going to be plenty of social security for all, et cetera. And, you know, basically in 2008, 2009, I think the culture broadly shifted toward, you know, maybe, you know, indefinite 
<laughs> optimism for a while and it's probably now turning toward like indefinite pessimism <laughs> as people don't know what's going on the millennials are not richer than the boomers by any stretch and uh you know nobody knows where it's going and that's that's where i think um some aspects of technology whether that be like ai ml bitcoin and you know other things are, are providing the path toward uh you know maybe getting large swaths of culture if not the entire culture back on a path toward uh you know definite optimism um that's certainly what for me you know bitcoin does that and i think we can talk about that a little bit too uh that's a lot to chew on i like it um yeah. those are those are some <laughs> you know and and i assume that what you're talking about primarily is like an economic focus when you're talking about those well but, kind but of but i think it's it, even larger yeah yeah it, it's socio and economic culture. yeah like i think we should everything you want we should get knut in here yeah, yeah you know he's it. also a musician and we definitely want to talk about you know how how these changes sort of uh affect and are affected by you know culture and art and music as well and i think that'll be a fun part of this conversation so I would say without further ado, let's bring in uh, the man, the myth, the legend, all the way from uh, the frozen tundra of the north, but it's summer there. Um, here we go. Knuts von Holm, do we have you? You have me. Hi. You hey, had Knut. me at hi. <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here. Yeah. Yeah, you and I have spoken before, but I'm thrilled to introduce you to uh, to my brother, Matt. I think this is going to be great for you guys to chat a little bit, too. Yeah. Very nice to meet you, Knut. Nice to meet you, Matt. Um, both of your music uh, has been compared to early Neil Young over the years. <laughs> that was, uh, so you got that going for you guys. Uh. Yeah, better to, than to be compared to late Neil Young. <laughs> <laughs> or experimental Neil Young. Um, there's or any other Neil Young for that know. matter. <laughs> oh, man. But Neil is, Neil is awesome. <clears throat> yeah, even Neil old. <laughs> he fights for justice. I wonder, you know, he might be a Bitcoiner. You never know. He's pretty forward thinking. Ah, you think so? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, he, he's definitely taken a lot of pills. Uh, I don't know about the orange one. <laughs> the orange one. Uh, that's pretty funny. Well, uh, Knut, I wanted to just have you uh, give a little over overview of yourself, and let, let's do it this way. Tell us like the the three or four things that that matter most to you. The three or four things that matter most to <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what what do you care about? Oh, what I care about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, the obvious answer is my family, of course, and uh, uh, my close friends, like everyone else. Uh, that's uh, my top priority. Uh, but I also care about Bitcoin, of course, since since I'm in this thing now and uh, doing it sort of semi-professionally here. So, uh, so I care about that, and I care about. Uh, Bitcoin as an opportunity for libertarians to actually test their theories about the world and <laughs> to see if if Austrian economics is really the the proper way of looking at things, which I believe it is. And uh, uh, I think that these ideas will never be implemented by political means. Uh, I think we need to use focus on the tools instead of uh, trying to change society within the uh, current system or the current paradigm. We, uh, like we can't we can't change it from within, but we can change it change things for ourselves uh, individually by by uh, choosing the right tools to opt out of whatever it is. Like you can start. Uh, picking your own news sources instead of just being spoon-fed whatever the mainstream media feeds you and you can you can use bitcoin instead of whatever currency is spoon-fed to you by your government in your country and you can do all sorts of things nowadays to to like free us free yourself and 
free your mind of the old operating system that you were born into, which is mainly your country or your your religion or whatever whatever software they they put in you uh, at a young age uh, you can question it all and uh, actually find find other ways nowadays and i find that very fascinating yeah it is and, so, so you've written two books on you know broadly bitcoin libertarian austrian economic subjects uh, over the last couple of years um sovereignty through mathematics and then more recently independence reimagined yes for yeah, those watching on video he, he's showing his wonderful looking books they're great i have uh both on kindle and audible and uh and, and check in on them they're great um you know one thing that uh we do a lot in bitcoin obviously is look for ways to get people to go down the rabbit hole and start doing their own research and, and learning more uh, and you, you look for little analogies or little, uh, you know, ways to talk about something that will hook someone's interest. You talk so much about, you know, personal freedom and praxeology and, you know, Austrian economics and libertarianism. What are some of the little uh, hooks that you may have if you meet somebody at a conference that, you know, is a bit Marxist or, you know, just loves their social security or whatever and kind of, you know, try to try to red pill them on on libertarianism or Austrian economics? This is a great question because I uh, I have the same I find this very hard because I have the same problem with my friends. Uh, with, I mean, my friends. We're all in our forties now, and uh, most of them are quite success successful in in whatever they do. So they like either they're entrepreneurs or or like doctors or or have uh, a high, high paying office job somewhere and uh, uh, so so they're all they're all kind of happy with their lives and uh, uh, don't really question the system that much since the system while they can see that it's flawed in some ways like with semi well in Sweden we don't call them corrupt politicians but we call them like incompetent <laughs> politicians <laughs> uh, and there's a there's a fine line between the two, but uh, well, they they see some problems, but very few people seem to understand the underlying problem of of inflationary currencies, and like uh, they they just don't know that there's another way. They think inflation is a natural thing that some some uh, some guy that's more intelligent than the, the common man has decided for everyone that this is the way and this is how currencies work and this is this is just the way things are and well they believe the Keynesian theories of if we don't have inflation people wouldn't do stuff and like wh whatever whatever it is that Keynesians believe yeah. uh, so, so let's make this real for a minute so uh, you know we're, we're going through uh, GDP basically the economy has fallen off a cliff since February March uh, but stock markets have gone up around the yep. world other than the initial shock. They've just, you know, bounced straight back. And this is because of money printing, you know, basically 10 X anything that we saw 12 years ago uh, and yep. just globally, just tons and tons of new money being created and what's already happening. Uh, you know, I'm seeing posts every day on Twitter of uh, just people complaining about prices going up, <laughs> you know, a, yeah, pint yeah, of, but a pint of beer is like, you know, 20% more than it was, you know, four months ago, things like that. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, this is, this is sort of, it's always a, uh, a dangerous thing to predict the future. But, but I think that like uh, the, the forthcoming inflation is priced in. And mm. this, is, this is sort of a good sign because it, it, it means that the markets know that there is more uh, uh, debasement of the, the currency coming. So the markets know about the inflationary system. They know otherwise the stock prices wouldn't go up, right? If the markets thought that, uh, oh, we have a limited amount of dollars, uh, <laughs> the, the stock prices would go down. But but it is sort of priced in. I hate the word priced in. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you understand what I mean? I uh, like, um, so, uh, and that is a good sign because that means that people the people with the money are aware of the inflation that is happening. And that 
that means that they might be aware of the perils of an inflationary system as well because they they know about venezuela they know about zimbabwe they know about turkey uh and they might know about bitcoin as well and all they need is a little push or a little nudge in the right direction and they they will fall down the rabbit hole just just like we did uh, uh if if they can just grasp the like the thing is, I, I think the people have a problem with grasping how how big a problem inflationary currencies really are, uh, because it's so it's such a huge problem that that people just fail to grasp that that there's a problem at all. It's it's like too much for them to to take in or something. Anyway, it's uh, I don't really know why people <laughs> why people don't see this the the way that I do. It's well, I, I think change is fundamentally really, really difficult um, yeah. for people. And now you're talking and now you're hitting them in somewhere, somewhere that is like you said, something that you have been participating in and and educated about in some way or another your whole life. Right. In terms yeah. of how something works and then coming yeah, it's in my, with a paradigm shift. My, yeah, it's my software. Uh, like, yeah, right. You, but you you're born change. with a nationality, and everyone thinks that their uh, their nation's milk is the best milk, or whatever. Like right. <laughs> that their cars are the best cars, whatever. And uh, there's a lot of that going on over here. Uh, Swedes tend to think that we're a bit better than everyone else, and a bit better educated, and a bit brighter than everyone else. And I, I agree. I annoying. think you are as well. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's why I, you know, it's like I have hope when someone comes from 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 the land of Sweden with with a great idea. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say something just about your title because I find it very provocative: sovereignty through mathematics. That's a that's a, a a very intriguing way to put it, I think. And it, uh, yeah, thank how you. How did you come up with that? And where? How does? Yeah, maybe. Uh, the thing, the thing was, I, I had another title, but I wasn't very, very pleased with it. And I told my brother, and he, he, uh, he thought it sucked as well. It was like, <laughs> uh, what was the original title again? It's like dealing with Bitcoin. Oh yeah, that... de dealing with Bitcoin is not a very good title. It's yeah. <laughs> sort of lame. Uh, I, I was going for some sort of duality there, but it didn't really. Okay doesn't hold the candle to the one you came up with yeah 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 but so sovereignty through mathematics that yeah that had a that had an impact that's on the on the cover of the second book maybe you've seen this before but i i love it so much that i have to show off here um uh, you know this cover <laughs> is this cover is made by an artist in in florida called fractal encrypt oh wow you nice. know about the guy this is the bitcoin full node statue oh. he's he's sold the it's a 3d printed thing and it's it's a prototype of a fully functioning uh full node so you can see all like like the the block halvings are all there and like the equations are there and some some quotes including sovereignty through mathematics right here uh, nice you see it do you see it oh yeah <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> where, that's amazing now, where is it there it there it is right just just there <laughs> Just there. <laughs> it's hard to see, but anyway. Uh, so when I saw that, uh, he posted a couple of videos uh, uh, of the statue on on Twitter, and when I saw that, my jaw dropped. Like, so funny that he came up with the sa exact same title as uh, the exact same expression as I did. So uh, I tweeted at him, and he's like, yeah. "Oh, uh, uh, that's why I put it on there. I re I listened to your book while uh, while I made the statue." <laughs> so. <laughs> so uh, oh wow there, so there are no I coincidences can... in, a, in a community this small it's like one giant That's mind amazing. meld i never even remember like who came up with what i will like uh I recently suggested like hey let's do something with tiktok next block which is something that people like to say in bitcoin yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and like brady my colleague had to remind me that he came up with that <laughs> <laughs> you you have such a uh plethora of uh, excellent colleagues Corey. <laughs> like i saw i saw you on board with reed womack yeah yeah he's he, working with us now 
he he helped me proofread this thing. So I haven't given him uh, uh, enough cred for that. Uh, oh. He was only on, on, with me on the project for uh, for a month or so, but he he helped me a lot. Uh, That's great. And, uh, and uh, I know Jan Pritzker has shielded my books as well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot, of, a lot of fans over in the House of Swan. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, well, great. Well, listen, uh, Knut, you you heard kind of our kickoff uh, banter and just kind of talking about the the direction that we're taking the show. And yeah. you know, w- one question I wanted to get into with you was specifically around uh, the future of like society and governments and how we will organize ourselves. So let's say that this, first of all, what are some of the trends, Bitcoin included, and some other things like toss some other stuff that you think will play out. Let's just, let's call it over the next, you know, call it the next like 10 to 20 years, however you want to talk about it. And then, you know, what are some of the things that are going to go well? What are some of the things that are going to go wrong? And let's just kind of get into some problem solving there. This is, this is talking about the future is always so hard because the one thing hold you, you to it in, you know, <laughs> year 30 of this, we'll look back and we'll say, you, you were wrong back in <laughs> or maybe, 2020 uh, I'm just or you were super right. Yep. Um, the thing I, 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 I think the, the most common thing to get, to get wrong is the, uh, the time frame. Uh, you can't really know how long stuff will take. Like, uh, I believe that uh, the collapse of the US dollar is inevitable at some point in time. But I don't know if that is in two years or in 20 years or in 200 years. Uh, And uh, I think it's impossible to say when. Like, and uh, that goes for all the other fiat currencies as well. And maybe for Bitcoin as well. We don't know that. We can't know. Like, Bitcoin is the best alternative. Uh, but it's kind of like democracy is like the best alternative we have as well. Uh, uh, being the best alternative doesn't mean perfection necessarily. Even though I, I, I think Bitcoin is far better than everything else that has been tried. Uh, so So we don't really know. Uh, anything can happen and uh, unforeseen, unforeseen things can happen. But if if there are no black swan event, events when it comes to like another, uh, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that we only have one shot at digital scarcity or a digital finite number of something. And that Bitcoin is that thing uh, and that you can't duplicate it. Uh, uh i've I've heard you say that a few times and i believe for sure that bitcoin is the only shot uh at present like it's the one that you want to get behind and and you know it already has the the network effect and you know the shelling point of like most people think other people will be down for bitcoin liquidity begets liquidity money transferred one all these things but let's say for some reason that you know Governments globally coordinated by the U.S. government shut off all an- on ramps, and this thing just kind of like somehow wither- withers away and dies in the next ten years. Um, yeah, then then I I, I don't. Would you restart have- it in fifty years? Wouldn't people try again in next decade or the one after? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, once this thing took off, this is like uh, that's that's the best shot we had at a fair distribution, and I don't believe you can do distribution in. Uh, in like a a planned way it sort of had to be unplanned and just grow organically because mm-hmm. otherwise there's there's no point and there's like it, it will ob- obviously be skewed like like all planned economies that they don't they don't work they never did mm-hmm. <laughs> they didn't work in the soviet union and they won't work in cryptocurrency either so if so, you ever try to reboot e-cash in the future by definition because we have the experience of having gone through bitcoin and 5000 altcoins or whatever everyone would be champing at the bit to get more than their share and it would go to insiders and it would probably be planned by governments etc it would be yeah. not not fair yeah yeah and exactly and so so there might be such a point but 
not as long as there are people aware of Bitcoin and the the Bitcoin blockchain and like we have all the UTXOs we have we have the blockchain so so we can always uh, if there's like if it gets hacked or something there's a way to to reset it from a, a, a certain point in time in a way even even though that would be very risky and very hard and uh, I don't really see that happening but but that is probably a better way of ensuring that it's that the system is fair than 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 to try to implement a new system and redistribute redistribute the the token somehow because uh like if hodling is not is not the thing but if uh, like if if you have a copy of bitcoin or if you have another currency that becomes the dominant one i think that is the most underrated attack vector to to not only bitcoin but but digital assets on a on a whole uh, i believe there's only one digital asset but anyway uh if if you're incentivized to to trade them for other things and not incentivized to keep them and and uh, hold them ho or huddle them or hoard them <laughs> then then uh, the the whole point is gone like then then the scarcity aspect didn't matter and then it won't matter in the future and there's there are no guarantees any longer that the next system what guarantees uh, what what would prevent that from happening again to the next to the follow up to system right. or to Bitcoin two point oh? So that, yeah. this is the basic assumption that you you have only one shot at this and you have to you, you uh, like this is this is your uh, this is our chance to 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 actually make a difference by by just using a tool. Uh, so when you when you think about time frames and you know people. There, there's a common argument that I see go back and forth and often participate in about uh, trying to make Bitcoin happen, you know, as fast as possible and working on that versus, well, you know, I'm selfish and I'd rather it stay cheap so I can buy as much as possible. And, you know, it's going to happen one way or another anyway. And like, you don't really need to market it or try to make it happen. Like it's either going to happen on its own pace. There's nothing you can do to affect it. Like, where do you, come down on that discussion uh well, well i'm i'm more of an observer i guess uh, uh i i don't really mind uh people having opinions about bitcoin and i don't really mind people trying to shill it and i don't really mind even like whales trying to to uh to dump them and and lower the price and i i don't really mind any of that uh as long as because i think uh, i see it as an organism that that is to be studied and observed rather than anything else uh to see if it actually lives uh the way i think it does and many of us do like uh we still have uh yeah and i don't really mind the time frame i i guess the, uh, these are difficult really difficult questions because I, I have I have no idea if if the transitioning uh, the transition from a uh, legacy system to a Bitcoin system will be violent or or uh, or peaceful and I don't know the time as I said before I, I I have no idea about the time frame this could happen like number goes up today uh, orange coin is good today and we're at like nine six and we might cross uh, the 10k mark tonight and that might mean that we see 100k within a week we don't know that uh, <laughs> we might see a million dollar bitcoin within, within two months we can't know and and it might also drop to like below a thousand and stay that way for 50 years before it starts to take off again i mean who knows right i mean you uh, your service like that dollar cost averaging thing that is uh it's not only swan but such services are 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 happening all over the all over the globe now so so i think there's uh, there's something there uh and as 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 long as people keep using them i i mean 
even if there were only two two users who had a, a, a like dollar cost averaging thing going on <laughs> their entire lives, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the price would have, of a Bitcoin would eventually go up <laughs> since because of the declining supply curve. Uh, I mean, it is inevitable. Are there any other trends outside of Bitcoin or adjacent to Bitcoin, whether cultural, economic, political, that you study up on quite a bit and care about or are watching or have forecasts about? I, I wouldn't say I studied them. Uh, I don't. I don't really. I don't even know what study means anymore. <laughs> since uh, <laughs> read about, listen to books. Like, what's what's? Yeah, the... I listen to a lot of pods and a lot of okay. books. So, like, and I read a lot of articles. Uh, so, yeah. uh, in in that sense, like, I, I find it fascinating how uh, um, how similar like woke culture and actual racism is. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, and like how uh, how the people who uh, the, the, this will to categorize people into different groups and to like uh, you are this and you are that and you are that sex and you are that sexual preference and you are that color and you are that nationality and you are that ethnic group I just dislike all of it I think everyone should like we should respect our fellow man regardless of like uh, what what matters is is what ideas and opinions people have not the superficial stuff and almost sounds like you're hearkening back to the dream of like the original internet in some ways which uh yeah did not really come to pass and got kind of bastardized by not being able to sort of remove your gender and you know just kind of having like a screen name and again I, I, you know, it's funny. I'm I'm super impressed by some of the uh, anonymous handles on a platform like Twitter that build huge audiences purely on the backs of their ideas and the way that they engage with people. And you don't know who they are, can't look them up, but you actually learn to trust them uh, more than you trust lots of people that you know in real life because you've been yeah, able yeah. to watch them behave. Yeah, Gigi is one, definitely one of those. I mean... Yeah, he's, Gigi's he's got one. great, great I mean, obsec. Like <laughs> even Hodlonot, <laughs> Hodlonot, sixty one oh two. Nobody's even heard the voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great guy, or yeah. girl, or whatever. Whatever. An AI <laughs> from the future. GPT three. Here GPT three. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a scary thing. Uh, the GPT three thing. Uh, I. I studied that a bit lately when, when when that thing happened. You heard about that, right? The new oh, AI, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, it's very fascinating because what it is, it it just predicts the, the next word. Uh, so that's that's what the, this massive database and this massive intelligence algorithm really does. It it predicts the next word in a sentence. But the things that you can do with that, uh, I mean, it, it learned maths that way. Uh, and that is so, so fascinating. But then, yeah, we'll see that what happens. That is pretty fascinating. Um, uh, another thing about uh, privacy and, and like OPSEC and being anonymous, uh, I think that's a double-sided coin because I, I, I chose, sort of chose not to be anonymous because I, I, I that this, there's something in the skin in the game theory as well as Taleb, so, uh, uh, Taleb's theory there about uh, if you have something to lose, if you put your name on something, you're more likely to take it more seriously. And I think there's there's something to that. I mean, I I I have something to lose by by yeah, your repu your reputation is out there. It makes yeah. you want to do a good job and it makes you want to defend your work and, you know, or adjust it to be in line with, you know, new information or new ways of thinking based on criticism or engagement or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. so for me, for me, it's, it's, it's more of a, like, I have to put my name on it in, in order to uh, make sure that I, I don't betray myself and just like, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've got something for you. I uh, I just used GPT three to uh, to see what it generates from uh, Svanholm. Uh -huh. Would you like to hear it? Yep. 
It says, friendship with me is 100 times more valuable than links from HuffPo, TechCrunch, Boing Boing, et cetera, combined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's about me then. This is, uh, this is the Svan Holm quote from, uh, from GPT-3. Okay, uh, because I have a, uh, uh, a celebrity uh, grandfather's brother. <laughs> he was an opera singer. Nice. Uh, yeah, in the beginning of the 20th century, uh, or the, the middle of it. Uh, so he's called Seth Svanholm. So uh, there's some recordings of him, and he was a really huge opera star in his day. <laughs> so his stuff is also all over the internet. <laughs> oh, I, my mine is real weird and out of left field. I'm not sure what to make of this one. <laughs> I guess it changes every time, so you can pretty much pick and choose. But uh, yeah, Clipston, the essence of XML hacking is controlling when you launch the missiles. <laughs> Whoa, that's <laughs> so, deep. Sounds, sounds like it might be picking up a little bit of the Germanic in, in the surname root. <laughs> sounds like Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> it does. You guys better watch out for me. I might be the guy. I'm not sure. Uh, this one's actually better. I just hit refresh, and it said... Uh, this, this is probably picking up something I wrote uh, somewhere. It says, in an MMT world, risks exist everywhere. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even in a, in a non-MMT world. <laughs> also true. Risks are everywhere. Uh, for anybody listening, MMT, modern monetary theory, which is basically the idea that we can uh, be just fine as a society with negative interest rates of like 4 to 5 to maybe 10%, where essentially we... Uh, if you put money in the bank, you have less of it every year by a long shot. <laughs> yeah. Go out and buy stupid stuff instead. That's much better for society yeah. and for the environment. That's right. So listen, I want to spend a little bit of time on, you know, having two musicians here. Uh, you know, my brother and I talk a lot about eras that have had meaningful music, you know, music that lasted and I wanted to, you know, just ask you, Knut, uh, what are some times, you know, think of like some years and some collections of bands or artists or whatever that had really meaningful music um, to you or to others that you're aware of. And then kind of like, what do you think gave rise, what conditions gave rise to that good music? Yeah, well, <laughs> since I'm speaking to Matt in Seattle, I'll, uh, hmm. I'll, uh, I have to talk about my uh, fascinate, fascination with the grunge era. I mean, I was at the ex exactly the right age when that happened. So, mm -hmm. and uh, so th those bands had a had a huge impact on me and a huge influence on on the music I uh, I I tried to do uh, afterwards with the bands, various bands I was in. Uh, I I liked especially Soundgarden, but the, but also uh, Nirvana and Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots and uh, they weren't from Seattle, but uh, anyway, I like I liked the stuff that came out of that era. And uh, when I go back and listen, I even listening to like Swedish bands or whatever, other bands that were from, from the same, like late, late mid to late 90s or maybe, uh, yeah, from mid to late 90s era was a good good era for music i believe and even earlier than that like uh that's one yeah i think i example. think example yeah i think that came from i think what was so appealing about that that uh that grunge era is is the music and the lyrics seem to have meaning like there yeah. was there is a purpose for this music you know, it went in, and it was kind of uh, in its in its way uh, a, a revolutionary force. You know, at least at the beginning, at the genesis, yeah. that it felt that way. And then, you know, I, I moved to Seattle in 1990, and it was right when everything was happening, and you know, oh, really? clubs, and you know, you go so to you, the yeah. You were there through. You lived through the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and I'm at the exact same age you know it's you know like <laughs> 89 90 you know we were protesting the first gulf war and then we were going to the club and stage diving you know like, um, 
So it was a very, very much a life style. And I, I miss having that, that purpose. How, how old um, were you? I was 21. Because 20, we 21, had... 22, early 20s. Uh, how, how old are you now? I'm almost 50. Almost 50. I'm 49. I'm, I'm... Yeah. All right. I'm 43. So I was more of a teenager yeah. when this thing yeah. happened. And yeah. we like when I started playing music, and so we, uh, I lived in a small town uh, called Leeds, Shopping, and uh, uh, there was quite uh, quite a bit of a music scene there. Uh, a, a lot of talented bands, and uh, and a lot of people from that town and that era are are in music now, and are producers and and stuff, and made careers out of it. Uh, but we we had sort of a a very living thing going in that. S- small part of the world as well of course we're all influenced by the things that were happening in seattle which yeah seems real and, uh, yeah yeah um i think a lot of uh yeah it's funny you mentioned uh you know by it, it was it, when you look at it it was a very brief few years where it was really yep. intense you know yep. and it seems like such a much bigger influence that happened but it was such a you know it was like yeah yeah by... Nirv- nirvana were huge <laughs> oh god yeah 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 it's amazing I... to to realize like i meet young people today that don't really even know who nirvana is yeah, yeah. and haven't heard of them you know but it's, <laughs> talk about feeling old yeah that's weird yeah, 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 yeah. It's here weird. And that guy, yeah. uh, did you see pictures of that guy on the cover? Never mind cover, the, the baby swimming. Oh, yeah. He's like in his 40s as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Getting, getting close, though, yeah. Yeah, maybe in his 30s, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's an old picture. It could be a picture from 1980 or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's interesting, like, it, was it something that springs up because of, you know, the the go-go greed decade, Gordon Gecko 80s, and then there's finally a recession, you know, the stock crash in, uh, in 89, the wall falling, just kind of like aimlessness and angst and, you know, then the Gulf War, you know, but the, the grunge movement had already kind of kicked off a little bit before the Gulf War and that just kind of accelerated it. Yeah. You, you know, is it is it the cultural moment that gives rise to important, meaningful music, or is it more of like uh, a great man theory plus copycats or people who are inspired uh, and just kind of like, is it just accidental? I think, I think it's a lot of those things. Uh, it's not one thing, you know, no. it's, but I think that there is that soup of, of timing, you know, it's kind of like how fashion, is always rolling through like you know, i'll see it's like bell bottoms are coming back you know it's like <laughs> again Sweet. you know for the That's third awesome. time you I'm know psyched. and or whatever and it's like i think with music you know there's like i keep waiting like this does seem like a really ripe time for a band to just knock knock the world on its ass right now um with with but i, I but I also, everything's so much more fragmented than it ever has been with the way music Yeah, pe- people don't give a shit about bands. I don't know. Yeah, it's... No, the kids not don't give a way. shit about bands. Not, not in the same way. Like, they, it's, no. they, they, they want faster entertainment. You know <laughs> who the rocks... Yeah. yeah. The rock stars today are the video gamers on Twitch. You know, it's like yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's a, yeah. and people reacting to other people doing stuff. Yeah, like uh, maybe there will be a, a reaction video to this podcast one day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> What's the possible. next thing there? Uh, like possible. people reacting to people reacting to stuff. <laughs> right there, you go. <laughs> it's not, bro. This isn't meta. This is meta squared. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fascinating. Well, uh, you know, if you ever want to listen to some of my, my brother's music, uh, two of his songs are the, the intro and the outro for this podcast. So you can get that. But since, uh, Knut just, uh, dropped a new track, I thought we'd try to, uh, play maybe 30 (laughs) seconds of your new song, uh, Moon, if I'm not mistaken. So let's, let's hear some Knut rock. See you 
staring at the sun while I'm waiting for the moon much too soon I'll be a better man if I can't get things done time betrays me and I don't want to waste my years things that I cannot replace all of the that's nice <laughs> go Canute <laughs> you're like a songbird are you just like descended from Jenny Lind <laughs> is she your great great grandma <laughs> No, but as I said, Seth Slonom is the is the guy there in my yeah, <laughs> yeah. right family. Yeah. Anyway, um, beautiful. Yeah, I thought would would be fun to to premiere that here. Uh, I haven't recorded a song in years, so. <laughs> well, maybe uh, this is going to be the thing. You know, a lot of Bitcoiners actually have some hidden talents. Uh, you know, Stefan Lavera, the podcaster and my partner in Bitcoin Adventures, is actually quite the singer. Uh, he is. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's sang choir his whole life. We got him to do a great uh, Sinatra oh, right. impression, put it on Twitter. Yeah. He crushes karaoke nights at these Bitcoin conferences. Oh, I had no idea. Mm. <laughs> I'd, lo I'd love to be on his pod one day. I mean, his pod is about Bitcoin and Austrian economics, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm, waiting for him to, mm, <laughs> to message me. <laughs> you're such a Swede just being all polite, waiting for somebody to call you. I'll write him literally when I get off of this and tell him to put you on. It's fine. You should be on. It'll be great. Yep. Uh that's fantastic. Uh so what was that uh what was that tuned in? That song? Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I tuned the A string to 432 hertz instead of 440 because of a stupid YouTube video I saw <laughs> <laughs> about some hippie, some hippie theory about if you see the painting there, uh, that's the Grateful Dead guy, right? Uh, right. That's, that's Jerry. Uh, that's Jerry back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the wave he pattern tunes behind yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's a visual representation of uh, four three two. I don't know. Maybe people who are into mushrooms or something know know a lot more of, about these things than I do. But <laughs> well, I'm into mushrooms. And I'm into four three two uh, starting now because uh, I'm an adopter. With that, I'm adaptable, and when I find something I like, I jump in there and I start doing it. So uh, yeah, that's why I mentioned Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, it. that's funny well anyway. guys this was this was really really just awesome to have you on Knut I, I loved this conversation uh, anything uh, where can people find you and, and what would you like them to do <laughs> just be before we end this oh, I yeah, sure. answered the first question yes oh, okay go for yeah. it I just said like uh, my family and Bitcoin those were the <laughs> that's right and then we had that's 50 right. minutes on yeah, but, and, uh, yeah yeah but then uh, well, two other things I care about in life. Well, let's skip those. Let's keep it to family and Bitcoin. That's, uh, <laughs> no, what are they? Obviously, music is one of them. <laughs> music used to be higher on the list. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, still, it's still there, of course. And uh, I'm basically enjoying life. Eating and writing. Well, drinking well, like, uh, yeah, writing. Uh, writing is fun. Yeah. yeah. Or being creative. Uh, well what's your favorite drink my favorite drink alcoholic only <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but you mean drink like cocktail right no could be a beer could be a whiskey could be a scotch could be a vodka you know i like beer i like beer a lot but then again i like wine and like rum and i like whiskey and I <laughs> like you're like a renaissance things. man with your yeah. alcoholic <laughs> beverages i love it i i like margaritas I think he likes the whole category, sounds like. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I uh, like every type of alcohol that isn't too sweet. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, great. Well, uh, everyone listening, uh, thanks so much for tuning in to Bright Orange Future. Uh, would love it if you just right now when you're done, just text one friend about Bright Orange Future, send them a link hit them on Telegram, send them an email, just tell one friend uh, to give this a shot. 
Also, uh, make sure to subscribe to Bright Orange Future in your favorite podcast app. You can find us at brightorangefuture.com. And uh, the other thing is uh, leave us a review. Five stars preferred, but you know, whatever you think, uh, the algorithms in these podcast apps love to see people actually caring enough to leave a review. So please do all those things. It'd be awesome. And uh, if you are, you know, want to get some friends into Bitcoin or you want to find a good place to buy some more, obviously feel free to check out swanbitcoin.com, uh, which I and a, a bunch of people involved with this show uh, work on that every day when we're not trying to entertain your ears. Any closing thoughts, Knut, Matt? No, uh, am I a, good. am I an honorary Seattleite yet? Oh yeah, yeah, you're in, you're in the club. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, actually, all Scandinavians are in the club in both Minnesota and the Pacific Northwest because of the uh, the immigration patterns. So, yeah, and the latitude, I guess. Yeah, we might be a little heavy on the Norwegians in Seattle versus the Swedes, but the Swedes are dominating Minnesota, I think. <laughs> Canute, you'd feel right at home here. Is is what we're saying? You'd feel you'd feel good. Uh, you should come visit. I'm, I'm sure I would. I'd love yeah. to. I'd yeah. love to. Yes. Anything okay, now. are we going to get you out to uh, Los Angeles for Bitcoin 2021 at the end of April? For 2021, I definitely hope so. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, COVID allowing, hopefully. We, we'll yeah, 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 or, or uh, other other crazy stuff allowing. Uh, oh but uh, yeah, right now I'm aiming, I'm aiming for Riga uh, if that happens. Yes, uh, that we don't even know that. So... Uh, but yeah 2021 sounds great yep all right well that's a wrap thank you so much bright orange future we are out